Hey, I'm 8-Pack. I'm making its way into the 8-Pack Overclocking Lab this week, weighing in at only a few grams, but with a massive 128 megabytes of L3 cache and a turbo boost of well over 5 gigahertz, we have a new challenger for the best mainstream CPU, this being the 7950X 3D by AMD. So, don't be a jabroni and watch till the end of this video because we'll cover stock performance, we'll cover PBO2 tuned performance, we'll cover memory overclocking, we'll cover also the thermals of CPU and a bit about power draw on all our standard gaming benchmarks, also on our professional benchmarks, and I've added a few extra gaming stuff in for those who always write that annoying stuff in the comments. And that will be the bottom line because 8-Pack said so. So now let's look at the pricing of the new CPU and also the specs on paper. The Ryzen 9 7900X 3D and the 7950X 3D are both launched on the 28th of February this year. The 7950X 3D MSRP is 699, while the 7900X 3D is 550 uh, at MSRP. At the current prices, this is a percentage increase of around 20% over the existing 7000 series. And obviously what we're gonna show in this video is, does the performance increase justify the extra price? Obviously I'm 8-pack, so I'm only really here checking out the flagship products. Uh, and in this video, I'm concentrating on uh, the performance of 7950X 3D when compared with the previous generation 7950X. And what we see from the specs basically is both CPUs are boosting to 5.7 gigahertz. Both CPUs have the same 16 core 32 thread Zen 4 architecture. The only real difference is in the TDP and in the L3 cache. The X3D has double the L3 cache with 128 megabytes uh, compared to the Ryzen 9 7950X, which has only 64 megabytes. And the X3D has a TDP of only 120 watts when you compare that to the 7950X, which has a TDP of 170 watts. I mean, the main talking point we can literally see from this is that the uh, X3D is using uh, less power. Uh, and also it's got double the L3 cache. I think it's also important to point out here that it has a lower base clock, 4.2 gigahertz versus 4.5 gigahertz. But of course, when we're actually running these CPUs, as people have probably seen this for years, the actual clock when you're monitoring is never anywhere near the base clock, but it's something important to point out here because there is a 300 megahertz discrepancy there between the two uh, CPUs on a spec sheet. Okay, so now we've covered a little bit about specs, let's go on to move on about talking about the cooling and temperatures. So basically, when I'm testing this, I'm mounting a 360IO to the CPU in the same way across both CPUs, and I'm running now a standard Blender uh, test, which is doing uh, Blender rendering on the CPU only uh, for just over an hour. Uh, and obviously what we're noting here is the maximum temperatures. And basically what I tested was the 7950X were just PBO loaded, which gave a maximum temperature of uh, 94C. When I used the exact same color, the exact same test on the 7950X 3D, we had a temperature of only 80C. And when I added PBO2 tuning to the mix, the maximum temperature I could get out of the CPU was 83C. So just uh, checking these uh, temperatures, we noticed that the X3D has a temperature of at least uh, 10 degrees uh, less than the 7950X. And in fact, if, if we're just comparing just basic tuning, we're talking about a full 14 degrees difference, which obviously means that the, the X3D is effectively drawing less power. And we see that from our graph initially, which was 120 watts versus 170 watts. And also what's causing the difference in temperature is also a difference in clock speed under multi-core loads. In multi-core loads, when you're running uh, the 7950X, you're running at about 5.2 to 5.3 gigahertz, whereas on the X3D version, you're running about 4.8 to 4.9 gigahertz. So that's also uh, the discrepancy of where the heat's coming from. In, in terms of coolers though, uh, and obviously I guess cases that you're putting the coolers in, I think maybe for the X3D CPU, a, a 240 cooler, if you're just using um, you know, stock or even PBO2, is now gonna be fine. Whereas that's really not an option on the 7950X. So we've now covered a bit about cooling this CPU. Let's move on to actual bench methodology and how we tested. So as usual for uh, AMD testing, 
uh, we were using an Asus Crosshair Extreme motherboard X670E. The, we were using the same Corsair C36 6000 megahertz memory for all the testing and that was set at XPO levels. So it was a CAS36 uh, latency. We're using the 360 AIO by EK, which I mentioned earlier. The usual Windows 11 install uh, and a 4090 GPU, which was overclocked mildly to uh, make sure obviously we're shifting as much as we can away from the GPU to the CPU when we're correlating results. And what I did first was I checked the stock 7950X3D performance versus the 7950X with just PBO enabled on it to get our first set of results. And what I did was run uh, my normal 3D benchmarks. I also ran our normal professional benchmarks and I finally ran three gaming benchmarks, uh, as I said earlier in the intro, just to satisfy some of these people who type a lot on the keyboards all day. What we found from all this was obviously that the 7950X actually was still a very good CPU when, when you talk about results that are not gaming essentially. We found that on the 7950X 3D Mark CPU profile it was 11% higher than the X3D. Times by Extreme CPU score was 8% higher. Uh, Times by CPU score was 7% higher. Fire Strike Physics was 6% higher. Cinebench R23, which is essentially a multi-core rendering, was 6% higher. And finally, the OCUK Blender test, which is a long blendering experience of well over an hour, it was a whole 21% faster, the 7950X, than the X3D. However, when you switch to gaming, we found that the X3D was like 6% faster in Dirt 5 at medium settings at 1080p. Horizon 5 at 1080p with again medium settings, it was 1% higher. Uh, Final Fantasy Benchmark at 1080p, uh, it was around 1% higher. Now what's appropriate here I suppose to mention is that the 7950X results were with a PBO tuning added, so some element of overclocking. Whereas the X3D uh, results were just completely uh, uh, utter stock. You just plug in the motherboard, set export on the memory and then run. So those gaming benchmarks, should you set just normal PBO, you, you would get a bit of a boost. Uh, uh, and you would get a bit of a boost also on the multi-threaded stuff as well. But I mean, already we're seeing what the shift is here. What we're seeing in the shift is that the temperatures uh, and general power draw is lower on the X3D. The performance is better in gaming, but uh, the performance in anything uh, massively multi-cored or anything that needs, you know, a combination of cores to remain at high clock speed, then the 7950X is a superior chip. So to summarize our first set of benchmarking results, in professional benchmarks, the 7950X is 10% faster than the 3D version. But if you switch to gaming uh, benchmarks, in gaming, the X3D at completely stock is 2% faster. So having covered that stock performance results, now let's move on to overclocking. This CPU is not uh, multi-ratio unlocked, so any traditional style of overclocking was out for this one. But I'm glad to say that PBO, PBO2 tuning and memory overclocking is all unlocked and gave me scope for some kind of tuning. So what I did was uh, PBO tuning, uh, enabled all that to the maximum limit of the motherboard and then uh, settled on a negative curve ratio of around minus 15. Now obviously different CPUs will allow different negative curve ratio and it's something that you'll have to uh, figure out yourselves if you're doing this to get the right degree of stability and boost by uh, adjusting the curve ratio. Of course, if you buy one of our bundles here, we will uh, do that for you uh, and it will come to you already set up so it's gonna be completely stable. So what benefits did we see uh, from this uh, PBO2 tuning? Well, basically, the PBO2 tuning meant that it ran at a higher clock speed given a certain load. And obviously the higher clock speed gave us better performance. And this performance was up to as much as 13% better on the Blender render test. And what it meant was that in all the professional benchmarks, we got an improvement of 6.6% just by doing PBO tuning. So definitely worthwhile, especially for those who are doing a lot of professional kind of stuff over a long period of time, you know, renders that take uh, hours and hours, you can save a good amount of time there. Uh, and 6.6% of free performance is definitely a, a boost worth having. 
And obviously by uh, doing this PBO tuning, we noticed that the professional benchmark scores were now much closer to what we got from the 7950X, but still did lag behind by around 4%. And it's really possible to summarize why that is. Even with PBO tuning uh, on the 7950X3D, uh, for the same load, it was still uh, at a lower clock speed than the 7950X. And, it, and obviously you can see that by uh, its TDP and power that it's always gonna be at a slightly lower clock speed because its aim is uh, to remain cool and obviously uh, to be great in gaming and as we'll see from the PBO2 gaming results it, it definitely has improved there. So that's the summary essentially for professional benchmarks uh, on the 7950X3D. It's closed the gap, but still not quite as good as the 7950X. On gaming, uh, which was uh, Forza Horizon 5, Dirt 5, it was overall now up to 9% better gaming performance uh, than the 7950X. And I found on all my gaming at 1080p, I saw between nine and 10% improvement which is a very solid gain over already a very, very good gaming CPU, uh, which is the 7950. Obviously, as I've explained before, the gaming tests are done at 1080p because I'm trying to make sure that the bottleneck within the system is on the CPU and not on the GPU. As you push the resolution higher and higher and that you push the detail on the graphic settings higher and higher, the benefit of the CPU is lowered and it shifted the emphasis to the graphics card. So having gained so much from PBO2 tuning, uh, the CPU, you know, to, to essentially gain more performance. I wanted to try also some memory overclocking. Now, memory overclocking had a lot of uh, different results here. So I took the same sticks of memory from 6,000. I added 10%, which meant that we're running at 6,600 megahertz. And I ran the full suite of benchmarks again. And literally that 10% of extra memory performance was not translated into what I'd call any statistically significant improvement in performance uh, on any of my benchmarks. They certainly didn't get worse, but you were talking about a less than 1% gain uh, for adding 10% to memory frequency. So that's something that I'm not ruling out that could be better if we go even higher on frequencies, but certainly uh, in my testing, which I did uh, over a couple of days, I couldn't find anything where increasing the memory speed was, was offering a significant improvement. And maybe we'll do a follow-up video on that at some stage of uh, tuning memory for this particular CPU uh, and see if we can uh, gain some insight as to why we're not getting uh, an increasing performance there. Okay, now let's summarize the benefits of the 7950X3D uh, against the 7950X. What we see is it's better for gaming at 1080p and generally better for gaming by up to 10% when you enable PBO2 and you do a negative uh, offset on the curve. Uh, like I say, I tested around 15, but you'll have to check for your own individual CPU. The entire X3D uh, range of CPUs from this we can deduce is gonna be better for gamers. Uh, if you're really serious about your gaming, these are the CPUs to go for. The other benefits, I guess, are that it's more efficient with a lower TDP, and thus it's much easier to keep cool. And like I hypothesized earlier, this CPU is probably not going to need a 360 AIO, uh, whereas the previous uh, non x 3 CPU will need a, a 360 AIO to keep cool, uh, as it's approximately uh, 12, 13, or even 14 in some instances cooler than the non x 3 version. What I do feel, uh, besides obviously being very positive about the this CPU in gaming is that AMD did miss a bit of a trick here with locking down the multiplier. Had they unlocked the multiplier and give you some element of voltage control, I'm sure you could push up the clock frequency and gain even more performance out of the CPU. I mean, we've got all this temperature headroom in hand that we could take advantage of uh, by just adding a little bit more voltage and then pushing the frequency of the clock up to what you can get out of uh, the normal 7900X while it's doing a given task. So so is the 7950X3D good enough for 8-pack systems? For sure it is, and I'm going to be incorporating this into the Meteoroid, which is my ITX small footprint system. Of course, this CPU with it being low TDP and low heat is going to be great in a small footprint system uh, and work perfectly. It's going to run very high frame rate uh, whilst remaining cool. If you don't want to configure an upgrade bundle yourself using uh, this new CPU, obviously 8-pack bundles will 
be made available too, where we'll uh, test all the PBO tuning settings for you, get that all configured in BIOS, and then all you have to do uh, is install it in your case. These bundles obviously come with the right amount of memory, uh, or so to say, uh, the memory that we know to be working with this motherboard and CPU very well. They come with a cooler and fans, so it's just a case of getting your screwdriver out, putting it in, booting it up, and you've got the optimal performance from day one. Those bundles, uh, the links will be available in the description below. And finally, don't like, don't subscribe, but do comment if you smell what 8-pack is overclocking.